Uh, I want to talk today about, I believe, a subject that we need to talk about without shame. We can speak it boldly as we ought to speak. But I want to talk about the price of freedom. There's a constant price that has to be paid. If you go to scriptures, it's out of 2 Corinthians 3.17. One short verse. It says this. Now the Lord is, that's, is the Spirit. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let's pray. Father, we're asking the help of the Holy Spirit to burn in our minds, our consciousness, our hearts. The reality of what the Word says about freedom. That, Lord, that we will not leave here the same. That we'll be able to stand up for the action you're requiring of every believer. To stand and be counted in these last days. Help us, Lord. We receive the help in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I love one translation which points it this way. Wherever he is Lord, there's freedom. Wherever he is Lord, there is freedom. Because we have to understand, according to the word of God, Jesus is the source of all freedom. Period. Full stop. And we want to talk about that today. Because there's always a price for freedom. And I hate to say this, but it often involves someone giving their life. Those who served in in the armed forces, those who served in the police and in the fire. I remember I had a, uh, a fireman, a dear friend of mine, George Hickson. He was a lifetime fireman. He told me how he had run into buildings to save people. How the heat was so hot in the house, it melted his helmet. It became like mush. And one time he got lost in the middle of a smoked warehouse, couldn't get out. And by the grace of God, he got out through a friend. So, you know, you talk about these things. It's like uh, there's a price to help people. There's a price. Amen. I remember at one time I was, uh, I got trained as a lifeguard. I thought I'd never use it. And one day I had to use it. And here's this guy, he's drowning in the middle of the river. And I had to go get this guy and bring him out. And uh, we managed to save him. But not after he, he was a big muscle guy, he thought he knew how to swim. But as, but as he was drowning, I could figure that he didn't know how to swim. So, but he grabbed, he grabbed me, choked me, because he, he pulled out of the grip I had. And we were going down to the bottom of, the, of this river. I remember I said, Lord, I don't want to go this way. Put my feet against his chest, pushed him off me, ripped the shirt off my chest. But we managed to take him to safety. But literally, I put my life in jeopardy to get the man out of the river. It's so true. Those who serve in, armed, you know, in the armed forces, they put their life on the line. The police put their life on the line. How would you like to dress in blue? If you pull somebody over to give you a blue light special, <clears throat> you never know when that person is going to pull a gun. Every time they have to be trained. So be a good citizen. Put your hands on the steering wheel. Amen. Get your, and, and don't lie and say you weren't speeding. Just be humble and be nice and be kind. It's amazing. You might just get a warning. I thank the Lord for my warning. Say that. <laughs> I carry a Bible with me every now and again on my, on my, on my back seat. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm a preacher. He turned the ticket up and says, preacher, slow down. I said, I will. And I have been good <laughs> lately. But freedom is from God. America is known as a country of freedom all over the world. America brings freedom to the to the bound people all over the earth. The seventh president of our great United States, Andrew Jackson, said, the Bible is the rock upon which the republic is built. Period. Full stop. It's the absolute truth. The foundation of freedom is the word of God. Our founders of this nation totally understood that. If you take the Bible away, it's just a matter of time to you going down. Let me tell you what's going on right now. We have some freedoms now. Everybody says, it's okay. But we got people, like we're flying in this plane. And we got to the altitude we got to through the engine power. But now what they're doing is shutting off the engines. Shutting off that puts us in a place of freedom. 
And with the engines out, we're in a, we're in a glide down. Oh, we think we're, we're okay, we're okay. No, we're headed for destruction. So we need to understand the days and times we live in. If there ever was a time that church must be the church is right now. We cannot play. Never take your freedoms for granted. President after president. I forgot to read after uh, FDR, Ronald Reagan, who is saying freedom is something that has to be fought for for every generation. Never assume it will be there the next generation. He said, you got to get this. We can lose it. In the last four, two or three years, we've watched how powerful it's been. How they come along with the scamdemic, I mean, whatever, the COVID, whatever. But I, I'm, I'm sorry. I know things I shouldn't know. Like I know the helper to, to the rector of CDC. I talked to him personally. He told me how he'd leave because he was made to falsify the numbers. Duh. You can know that from another place. But I want whatever your opinion is, let's just move on. The point is, I don't believe everything I hear. And we had these 13 colonies, and when they were, when they were launched they, through their charters, through their constitutions, everyone had one common thread. They would write it down. You cannot, as a revisionist, say it's not there. It's there. We are producing this colony for the cause to, of the gospel, right. to propagate Jesus Christ. They'll write it in the writings, every 13. In fact, Georgia, Fort Oglethorpe, I mean, Fort, I mean, not Fort Oglethorpe, General Oglethorpe, which, by the way, I found out Tommy said, I'm a descendant from Savannah. Are you kidding me? You go way back there? He said, yes, we are part of the British at one time. Let's reach out and pray for him. Hallelujah. Anyway, but <laughs> he said, we want to build a state that is a religious community. So that's the heart of the founding of America. Right. It was founded by men and women and women who understood that freedom only comes from God. You got to get this. Out of 1640s, they wrote this for the, all the northern colonies. They said, this is a statement they all agreed to. We all came into these parts of America with one and the same end and aim, namely to advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and to enjoy the liberties of the gospel in purity and peace. People will decry America and say, well, I tell you what, what about slavery? Let me just say this to you. America is not perfect. Amen. But you don't throw everything away because it's not perfect. Let me ask about you. Are you perfect? Oh, my, you're not perfect. We should annihilate you. No, we understand it's not all perfect. But you are now, because we are not perfect, we are now going to annihilate our past, vilify all of our founders, and just do away with all that we have as a history of this nation. That stand is from hell. You know, one of the things that upsets me is that we don't want rational thought anymore. Logic is now racist. Let me say this. You know they're smoking big weed when they come up with junk like that i'm sorry i still have a brain one on one is two and what you say is stupid okay and i ain't buying it i'm sorry if you want to be crazy be crazy by yourself but i'm not drinking that kool-aid and my job is to try to knock more kool-aid out of people's hands as i can get out of there quit drinking that stuff you gotta watch what you listen to huh Oh, the news said they run. Oh, am I? Don't get me started. Huh? <laughs> America may not be perfect, but let me say this. I have traveled over 50 nations of the world. There's no other nation on the planet right. like this nation. Right. None. None, none, none. She brings freedom. She gives opportunities for everybody. I'm in York, Pennsylvania, working with our evangelistic team, with Brother Ted Scholes, with Big Ten out there, we have a crusade for a week. And I'm working with this African-American. He came from North Carolina. We're talking. He said, I love this country. I said, talk to me. He said, you know, I used to be a drug dealer growing up, and I was good at it. He said, literally, I'd make millions selling drugs. But one day I got caught. I spent five years in prison. 
But in those five years, I found Jesus Christ. And here's what he said. When I got out of prison, I found a good church. And I was discipled. And I was raised on who I was in Christ, what I can do through Christ. And I took it in my heart and began to act upon it. Today, I'm a multimillionaire. I have my own business. He said, don't ever tell me that you're a victim. He said, people could say, you're a victim. You have to park the bus. You have a felony record. No, you don't. Not in America. If you will take that victim mentality and trash it and say, I'm not a victim. I have victory through Jesus Christ. I can turn a negative into a positive. I can turn what the devil gives me and make it into a stepping stone for my blessing in my future. And to say and to preach, oh, you're a victim. This is what other people have done. And this is where you are. That is against the B-I-B-L-E. That's not from God's word. That's from hell and some other news agencies. Right. <laughs> Only God gives freedom. He is the source of all liberty. Never forget it. Only God. It says in the Bible, this is the great filter of all the, I want to say if I can't, all the blank out there. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> Galatians 5, 1, the Amplified said, in this freedom, Christ has made us free and completely liberated. Someone said, hallelujah. hallelujah. No one frees you like Jesus frees you. Because Jesus went and paid a price that you and I couldn't pay. We owed a debt we couldn't pay, and he paid a debt he didn't know. I needed someone to take my sins away. You see, Jesus is the true freedom giver. This book, the Bible says, is God breathed. God breathed on the hearts of men and women who wrote this book. This book is God's heart. The Ten Commandments, people don't like to think about this, but let me just explain to you where they came from. In Exodus 19, God himself spoke to all the Israelites surrounding Mount Sinai and verbally gave them the rules of conduct. Then he took his laser pen and cut the thing into the rock and had it taken down. It is the mind of God how human beings need to conduct their life. This book is the filter. Whatever doesn't line with this book, Take it and put it in the trash. Don't even handle it to defile your thinking. You've got to get radical in these last days because the world is trying to pollute our thinking. And if he can pollute your thinking, he can change your life and bring you into his trap. But I don't want to go in no trap. So whatever that's not in the word, I reject. And I deal with Christian pastors that always equivocate because when it comes against culture, they start mumbling. They are the backbone of a chocolate eclair. They bend under pressure. Do not bend under pressure. You must be willing to die for what you believe. Do you understand that? You guys know. I am not being moved by the opinions of men. If your opinion doesn't line with the God, God's word, I don't listen to you. Because you're mixed up. I love you, but why should I follow a confused person? Amen. And a lot of pastors are confused. I'm just saying it like it is. Don't shout me down now because I'm preaching real good. But listen, this book is the truth. It is the truth. Now, the Bible makes it real clear that all men are bound. Adam was born free. He was a free man. Walking through the, the garden, he'd be free and he'd be cool. He's so cool, he's got no clothes. As he's walking through there, you've got a devil out there. That's always lying, and he's, uh, he's, a, he's a con man. He sold Adam on the fact, you know, Adam, you can be independent if you'll just go against the word. Let me just say this to you. When you line your life up with the word of God, your life will be blessed. Every step away from the word of God, I'm telling you, it brings the curse. When Adam stepped away from what God said, he said, don't eat that. But he disobeyed. You know what happened? He died spiritually. The devil came along and said, you know what? I want to make you wise. You're going to be fulfilled. He took the apple. All he knew was shame, 
fear, guilt. He said, you know what? I'm going to make you like a God. You'll be like a God. Really? As soon as he stepped away from the word, he became a slave of hell. You understand this? One step away from this book is bondage. The only place you can stay free is in it. Because the book, the Bible, and God are one. What God says and what this book is are one. You got to get that down in you. Don't get religious. That's our problem in America. We, 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 a religious. The greatest enemy is not the devil. It's mental assent. You assent to the truth, but your life doesn't correspond with what you say you believe. That's why we got to have preachers. Because sometimes we do slap you because you're asleep, but you can come awake in the house of God. Amen. Someone shout Amen. amen. I got I to gotta help you come along here. But you understand this? The mankind lost the power to break free. All of religions around the world, you have to do something to get something. Whether it's a sacrifice or paying homage or whatever you got to do, it's all of them. Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and all the other animisms. You got to do something to get something. But Christianity is so different. It says you can never do enough. You can never do enough to make heaven and to absolve your sins. Never. You're bound. The only one that can unlock the chains is Jesus Christ, who became your substitute at the cross. If you'll accept him, he will unlock the chains of your life and you'll be free. Now let me talk about hell a minute. No one talks about hell anymore. It's not cool to talk about hell. I want to talk about hell. I just listened to a, a mafia, a former mafia head, really high up. He got locked up in solitary for like 90 days. He spent years in prison. He found Christ. He's out there preaching. I'm going to bring him here. I like people from the mob. <laughs> You're talking to me. You're talking to me. Yeah. He said, let me tell you what we don't do in America. He said, I am with Jesus. What I didn't have was a fear of hell. He says, I warn people, hell is real. You are a spirit being. When you die, you don't die. You bring your memories, your feelings, and you, when you cross the line, you're still alive. Where are you alive? Depends who you belong to. If you belong to Satan, you're going down. If you belong to Jesus, you go up. I have a friend, Larry Huggins, great preacher friend of mine. He was a man, he was a Baptist. A BDI Bible banger. Went to Sunday school, said he was saved. But he smoked. He ran around. He's trying to be cool. But he's really a fool. Because he died, he OD'd on his drugs. In his own testimony, I go into this blackness. I'm floating, but I'm floating down, and I'm gaining speed. And I know I have enough Bible to realize I'm going in the wrong direction. So he gets to call on God. He says, God, please help me. I'm going in the wrong direction. I don't deserve to go this way. I've been in Sunday school. I've been in church. I'm a Baptist. He said he kept falling. Then finally he stopped, and there was a light far above him, like a little pinprick of a light. And as the light came to him, it was Jesus Christ himself. And he starts telling Jesus how he doesn't need to be going to hell. He's been a good man. You know what Jesus did? This is before the digital world of videos. He just popped the screen that was there. Jesus is ahead of the curve. He began to watch his life unfold. Scene after scene after scene after scene about his life. He fell at the feet of Jesus. He said, Jesus, I deserve to go to hell. But I believe that you're the Christ and I repent. Jesus picked him up, kissed him. He said, I'm going to send you back, but you warn people there is a hell to shun and there's a heaven to gain. He keep popped back in his body. He went, I mean, that guy is a powerful preacher today. Right now he's in Spain preaching and he's spent his whole life preaching. But you know what? Literally, God can scare the hell out of you. <laughs> because we get too smart, too religious. It'll take you there. 
You're, you're scaring me, Pastor. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to. Because we get too lackadaisical in the house of God. Understand, we're teaching truths. These are not just, this is not fairy tale. Amen. And so we look like Paul said in Romans 7. We say, well, for the good that I will, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. People go, yeah, that sounds like me. Then he goes on to say, 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who delivered me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ the Lord. I can be delivered. Jesus can deliver you from the bondage of hell. Jesus can deliver you from having to be bound by what your body tells you. I don't want to do it, but you end up doing it. And Jesus was the one that preached freedom. He had a freedom message. In Luke 4, 18, I believe he preached the sermon everywhere he went. Through the Lord's upon me, he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty. First, he proclaims liberty to the captives. I want to let you know you can be free. And then a little bit down the line, I've come with the power of God to set free. I want to set you free. I'll preach you free, but then I'm going to help you get free from all captivity. Jesus said, if the, the soul that sins, he said, if anyone sins, he's a slave of sin. People say, well, I'm not sinning. Well, really? It was, it's just, I talk to people that drink a lot. Now, if I'm talking to you, if I'm stepping on your toes, let me step a little while longer so God can heal the toes. <laughs> I talk to people that say, well, I, I, I'm not a drinker. But you have a quart every other day, a beer. Well, I should, because I'm just a social drinker. I said, no, what? You, sir, are addicted. That sin has got you by the throat. No, I can not do it any time. Oh, really? I said, let's just do a test, shall we? Okay. Starting from today, no drink for a month. You got that? Man, I got it. I said, we check it. First two days ago, no, haven't touched a drop. Okay. First week, haven't touched a drop. Pretty impressive. That's the last I heard of him. <laughs> and so when I met up with him about a month later, well, you know, I'm not just, I'm trying to, you know. No, no, no. The first thing you have to do to tell people when you counsel them, you got to admit you got a problem. If you don't have a problem, you, can, you can't get delivered from it. It's the truth. And so we do not counsel people here. If we know you've got some demonic powers, we cast them out of you. And don't tell me, listen to me, we cast devils out of people. We have churches come here. I said, we, we heard you cast out devils here. Yes, we do. I said, are you serious? Yeah. And so I've asked your churches, tell me, well, we're going to send our person because we've counseled them. And nothing is happening. We cast out devils almost every week. People come in here all bound, can't talk, losing their mind. We cast the devil. I'm not making this up, folks. I'm sorry. They leave out here with a mind sane, healed. No, because it works. Because Jesus is real. He's real. You have to understand this. The spirit world is more real than this physical world. Well, you can see your body, but that's temporary. Your body can be burned up and go away. Everything in this house could be, uh, forgive me, we're just using this illustration. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can annihilate anything with material, but your spirit, man, think about this. Everything is spiritual. And so the Bible tells it. Let me tell you how it works. There's spiritual powers of darkness that are in the earth today, and they influence people to do evil things. But they're also, the spirit of God is here, and he wants to influence you to do good things. And so the whole thing about church it's like a car wash. You come in here with your doubt, your unbelief, or your worldly thinking, and you, you start washing off the, again, there's that word. I can't say it. But you, you begin to wash off that stuff, that cow dung, and get clean, and get your mind clean, and get your spirit clean. Oh, it's called freedom. Hallelujah. You're free when you can walk right by the package store, and say, I used to go in there and get all the kind of stuff. Amen. Now, if you're still doing it, no condemnation. God's still working with us. God has no failures, only learners. We're all learning how to do this. So just breathe in, breathe out. You'll survive. All right, you ready? So Jesus came to set us free. The Bible said that he, he the scripture says he purchased us with his blood. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed. So Jesus brings freedom. Satan steals it. Satan doesn't want any human being free. He wants you bound. When America stood firm on what it believed, it was free. 
Do you realize that Americans' public education was, bounded, was focused on the Bible until about 100 years ago? That we would teach you the principles of the Word of God. And we would teach them the principles of what real freedom is, is found in God. And as long as we kept teaching our children, they would produce the next generation. But 100 years ago, there was a man by the name of John Dewey. John Dewey is a philosopher and an educator. Go read him up. Google him, young people. John Dewey, he was an atheist. He was a humanist of the tallest order. They said he was a pragmatist. Anything he couldn't see, touch, feel, wasn't real. He only deal with reality of production. And I remember reading this guy. He signed the communist, I mean, the humanist manifesto. And I remember reading one of the statements that said, we've got to stop this idea that men have an immortal soul and that there's life after death and punishment for wrongdoing. We have to, he said, those thoughts are, how do you put it? They're harmful. That's what he said. They're harmful. Now, if you are a devil, you're going to find a smart person filled with ideas. And Dewey has been looked up to throughout the decades, if you're in school, as one of the great founders of American education. I want to say this. He's one of the greatest enemies. Because when we leave teaching the things of the principles of God and say, no, it's, it's separation of church and state, we start as a Christian nation. Well, I'm Muslim. Well, welcome to the Christian nation. Welcome to the Christian nation. You come here from your different Middle East countries because they won't let the women speak and they abuse the women and they do all kinds of things we won't get into right now. But you understand this, that we have to be able to give out this truth that Satan comes to bring brokenness in people's lives. And we understand this. Our people understood that if you get the children, you keep the freedom. But if you lose the children, you lose your freedom. And so there's a time yet. We're not totally done, but the door is closing. We've seen the last few years the most crazy things. But we've got to understand this, that we cannot put up with this in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the Bible says for fathers, fathers don't provoke your children to wrath, but, raise it, but, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. God expects us to teach our children what the word says. God expects us to teach them the principles on how to live a free life. Many of you have been raised in Christian homes. Many of you haven't. But I'll tell you, if you've got a Christian background, you're ahead of the game. To have the faith of God put in you, to listen to what God has to say, it'll change you. Now we have this going on. We now have, we've got so far out there, we don't know what's right and wrong. So now with children, we have gender fluidity. They're already trying to figure out who they are. Then you throw that on top of that? Seriously? Then you bring the CRT, critical race theory. And I've read it inside and out. And any man who says to me, I don't understand it, I don't want to talk to him anymore, especially when they imbibe its roots. Because critical race theory, by the grace of God, by our, our governor and our state and house, just passed the law that CRT cannot be taught in a, in a Georgia school. You know, I don't want to mention the name of the school. It's yellow and black. It's supposedly a bunch of smart people. My son graduated from there. He said, I remember them saying, uh, there's a free speech zone. What do you mean? He showed it to me. It's about the size of the stage. This is the place on the campus that you can have freedom of speech. I said, what about the other places? Oh, that's not freedom of speech. I said, that's a crazy rule. More good news. The government just signed into law that free speech on every square inch of public property. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, we have to push back on this nonsense. I don't care if you got a doctorate. You're still stupid because you don't understand what, this, what, the, what the Constitution has to say. 
Amen. And then we go down to, oh, socialism. Young people just buy me. Socialism, that's the way to go. Capitalism is greed. Socialism is need. Well, how can you be that dumb and still breathe? <laughs> capitalism. Through capitalism, you businesses have to produce what people need in order to be successful. It's just the way of the game. And even Jesus said, Matthew 25, I'll give you five talents, I'll give you two, I'll give you one. You better be capitalistic, you better produce it. And those who want to just imbibe the socialistic world, take the reefer out. They said, Sweden, we look at Sweden, it's the model case. Well, you know, look at Sweden. In the 80s, they hit a peak of high economic productivity. And they had all this money, they were in a bit of a, like a slush fund. So they started giving everything away. You have this, this, socialism all over the block until their economy started to tank. And then they started sucking air and they reversed their socialistic ways. Socialism, in that, uh, just the elite, they're the ones that, that decide what's going to be made. And they're the ones that, that decide how much it's going to cost. Have you all ever bought a Russian car? My mother was raised. She got out of Czech Republic. When Hitler left, she left. Went to London. Met my dad, RAF pilot. But I'd go back, I'd hear this quote, socialism. Communism is just militaristic socialism. I've been there where every building was gray because they couldn't have enough paint to paint the buildings. I've been on the streets where everyone looks somber. No one laughs. Because everything you say or do Someone's watching you, and you could disappear overnight, and no one knows where you went. There are no personal freedoms. You are subjugated to the few, and they call that living. When the Czech Republic got free, when I went back, every building was colored bright. People were smiling. They were making money, and they were free. Just understand this. Socialism is the devil's lie that you can be free. But socialism declares the government is your God. The government's not my God. God is my God. The government is my servant. Let's get that right. And it's out of balance. It's out of balance. But you see, the work is the work of Satan. But understand, he goes after children. That's why we go after children. That's why I get behind people that go after children. I go after with Bill Wilson. We just had two people came back from Bill Wilson, 50 years, working the streets of all the cities. He ministers to a quarter million children every week all over the world. Somebody shout amen. amen. I'll tell you what, that's where it's at. Get the children and then get the youth. We've got to quit. If, I'll tell you what, if church is all it's got is blue hairs, gray hairs, shut the doors. It's over. you got to get young people. That's why we got the tent up, chief. I got the tent up there for, we had until nine months, and I used it to put the young people, they were preaching, they were singing, they were laying hands to sick and delivering people. I tell you, you got to loose these children to do the work of God. Us adults, get out of the way. Let them do it. We're in Roswell High School. Where's that? Right down the road. Two principals, Roswell High School Centennial, came to meet us several months back. They said, listen, through COVID and through all that's been going on, our kids are miserable. They're performing badly. Some are suicidal. Some have killed themselves. We're in deep weeds. Can you help us? I said, sure, we can help you. Give us a place where we can meet with them during the day. And it took about a month or so to make this happen. But the principal of Roswell said, I'll tell you what, you can have the media room down the hall. First time we got the okay, we go there. We go Now, there are four periods for cafeteria. We go to the first one. Okay, anyone who wants to come down the hall to get prayer and Bible study, please stand up and come with us. We thought maybe a dozen, two dozen. You know what happened? The entire cafeteria emptied out. They all stood up and marching down the hall. Where's the media center? It's just in the, in the media center. Now, we got teachers that are wigging out. Security, security. <laughs> like they weren't expecting this thing. It was freaking them out. Well, then they got to another teacher, and they called the superintendent and said, hey, you can't do this. They shut it down. 
but it lets you know the temperature of the young people. They really want God. Does that make sense? And so I believe this, that America is going to experience a great revival in the youth, a great move of God. You know, I, can I just say this personally? Because I go on the streets. We have people, we go on the streets every week. I'm on the streets all the time. I am not a theory preacher. I get out of my desk. I go on the streets. You understand that? I go to nations of the world. We do crusades. I'm always in people's face. All the time. You know what I got to tell you? People are open for Jesus. They are open for God. And they're hungry for the Lord. That's what I want to tell you. To have this idea that the press says, I tell you what, we're a post-generation. No, we're not. I want to tell you, people need God. And so be excited about opportunities. Are you with me out there? Now, I've got to go because it's getting it's later than it's ever been. But we cannot allow the lies, the lies to take us down. Look what Colossians 2.8 says. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to all the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. That's Colossians 2.8. And so the, the word cheat, is the word in the King James, spoil, which means beware, let people's teaching spoil you. That means bring you to plunder you and make you captive. Socialism is that kind of thing. I tell you what, gender fluidity is that kind of thing. I can go through, I don't want to go through all the social idiotic things that are happening right now, but it's to take away our freedom. What do I do? How do I come against this? i got some good news. The Bible's got the answer. You know what it says? Ephesians 6. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities. Rules of doctrine, spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, what, you know what God says through the mouth of Paul? Stand up. Stand up. Don't let your spirit get cowed down with everything that's negative in the world. Stand up. Do you understand that you're on the winning side? You've got God. They have demons. We got God. Do you understand that? We're the ones with the power. No, but they they get mean. They get mean. Oh, my God. If you don't hit them, they're an error. They'll come after you. Here's what you got to do. Stand up. You got to stand against fear. Stand against intimidation. Like the, that chocolate eclair pastor. I would unfriend him. I have one word for him. Get saved. You know what we did during the COVID? We never shut down. We stayed wide open. And just for me, in my nature, I said, just for that, we're having service every day. We had, we had service every day for, for months. You know what? No one died in our church, and we were right at each other. No one died. No one died. In fact, we still do mission trips. We go all over the world. We did that in the midst of COVID. We're not stopping. Are you serious? Number one and a half, what they say is total, it's a lie. And anyone with medicine that was asked to speak, the head immunologists, you know, the real guys were shut down by the high tech media. We don't want to hear that narrative. Because you understand the globalists, the elitists, they want to subjugate the people, erase all borders. And quite honestly, I have to stand when they have this. Right here. I lose members over this. Uh, we don't, I tell you, America. I, I, I said, you know what? You drank the Kool-Aid. Just because you drank the Kool-Aid, I didn't drink it. Amen. And America is a great country. Yes. And I want to tell you something. We, we have got to stand, though. The, you know, the price of freedom, you got to pay it. Yeah. Every one of us has to pay it ourselves. You have to stand for what's right. When you know what's right, don't capitulate to people that'll browbeat you. You know, it's almost like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood before that great golden image, and Nebuchadnezzar says, Bow! Bow! You know what it is today? Humanism, secularism, atheism. The whole world says, Bow! Bow! What are you going to bow? Because you're a pack of liars. Now we got global warming. Global warming. What a pack of lies. No, no, no. They call it global change. No, no. No. 
No, no, it was global warming initially. And I looked it up. You know why they made the change, the climate change? Because they were getting from one PhD in the UN, some guy from India. After 10 years, 10 years, he's cranking all this data. Oh man, hey, you see this, you see this. Then they found out the guy made all of it up. The whole thing was a sham. But the press goes, oh, no, deal with that. But no, go Google it yourself. Go Google it. So they lie. They just lie. Whatever will subjugate you, that's the way it is. And so you got to stand up. you got to stand up for your children. I'm not allowing my child to be subjugated for teachers that want to fill their, their, their little mind with trash. No, we're going to stand. We're going to stand. And don't tell me as a parent that I'm a terrorist. No, anyone on the DOJ that says that you're the terrorist, you need to go. Because you can't figure right from wrong and what's up from down. I'm a parent standing for the rights of my kid. And you got to make a stand. You see, we got to stand. Now, let me tell you what. You got you to stand for Jesus as well. Don't mumble who you are. Who are you? I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Don't mumble. Don't be ashamed. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Why would you be ashamed of one who made the earth and sky and everything in it? Why would you be ashamed of the one that went to the cross? I'm not ashamed of him. But you got to stand up. you got to get some boldness. Pray for boldness. Get some spiritual chutzpah about you. Don't roll over. Well, I'm just trying to be nice and humble. Let me tell you something. Humility without truth is cowardice. And that's why I dissociate from many pastors. If you've got no backbone, you refuse to stand, you want to flow with the culture, you're blurring my vision, get out of my way. You say you don't understand CRT? Now listen to me. We're a cross-cultural church. Nearly 70 nations attend this church. My own son married a Kenyan. You should see my grandson. He's wonderful. But the deal is you cannot take a truth that we need to drive out racism and then throw in false doctrine. That's not Bible. But you got to make a stand. Amen. We as Christians, this is our finest hour. Amen. We can either sit down and let the culture have its way. Or we make a line in the sand. You say, you know what? I'm not backing off, backing down anymore. Not, not doing it. My dad was an RAF pilot. The Battle of Britain. Churchill said, never have so many owed their lives to so few. I want to say it this way for the church. We may be the few, but God's counting on you and I. Because let me tell you what, I fully believe America shall be saved. I fully believe there'll be a move of the Holy Ghost, a spiritual awakening. We've had them before in our nation. Go read the books. The awakening, it happened supernaturally, swept over our land. Churches began to flood up. People getting a hold of God like they never got a hold before. All of a sudden, Jesus became the most important thing in their life. It can happen again. Amen. Starting in our universities, in our colleges, grade school, high school, elementary, it's going to happen. But God needs you to stand, pay the price. Sometimes when they mock you, pay the price. Sometimes when you have to take a public office and you get maligned, pay the price. God's counting on you and I. We need to be that city that's set on a hill. When they look at us, they say, what's different about you? I stand for Jesus. I say, listen, listen, what we need to stand for? You stand for the church. You stand for the local church. Don't make church like a Kiwanis club, a Rotary club. I could take a leave. No, no. You need to find a church. Get discipled. Stand. Stand to give. Why'd you make money? Give it to God. That's your first job. If, I tell you what, people become millionaires in this house because they make God number one and giving to the kingdom number, number one. You start giving to God first, that's called making a stand. You got to make a stand. But when you make a stand, then God shows up and the anointing. I'll close this verse, Joshua 1, 9. He tells Joshua, they had the same enemies. They had all the kind of uh, conflicts that they're going to have to face. He said, Joshua! Be strong and have a good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
We need to realize we are on the winning side. Jesus is coming soon. So as we stand for freedom and pay the price, America shall see a new wave of freedom all over this country. Hallelujah. Someone shout amen. That's why honor our heroes is to honor the history of this nation and our forefathers that laid their life down that you and I could live the freedom that we enjoy today. But we must stand because if we don't stand within a generation, it'll be history. It'll be over. This is the most critical hour right now. We need to stand. So let's pray. Father, I pray for you.